shepherd, I'll follow all my days. There is nothing sweeter than to watch you make the way. You've walked me through the valley, but you never steered me wrong. So lead on, good shepherd, lead on. Step by step, day by day, lead me on, Lord, I pray. Road gets dark, walk by faith. Lead on, good shepherd, step by step, day by day. Lead me on, Lord, I pray. Road gets dark, walk by faith. Lead on, good shepherd. 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 Lead on. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It is so good to see you all on this much more spring-like day than we were starting to have at the beginning of last weekend. A uh, couple of announcements. We have a clipboard going around for the Kairos yes. prayers. You want to say something, Gene? Uh, our Kairos weekend is this coming weekend starting Thursday. And as we've done in the past, we've had people sign up that are going to pray for our weekend. So if you <laughs> fill this out, there's another one over there somewhere. Where's yeah, the one over go. here? Uh, oh, she's got so it. So just put your first name and Newcastle or the town that you live in, and then I'll pick them up. Uh, I know a year ago when I was part of this, we had enough of these signed that we probably could have wrapped it around this room probably almost twice. That's awesome. So uh, just keep... Keep uh, signing up for it. Thank you. Absolutely. We also have career day coming up. It is when, uh, I think it's the juniors and maybe the seniors. I think so. Um, they meet with different organizations uh, uh, in our city, finding out what kind of jobs that they have. Last year, we were the only church there. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily think of being employed by a church. Um, but we are also a great place for kids uh, to learn things. And so we go and we set up and we talk about the different opportunities uh, for learning that are available in the church. But we need people to, one, set up, two, hang out there and say hi to kids and ask them what they're interested in and hand them a bookmark, and three, tear down. It's not super hard. There is a sign-up sheet uh, right up here on this front pew, and it's got just a few slots. We don't need a lot of people, but we do need people, so we really appreciate it if you would sign up for Career Day on May 5th. Uh, T, Miss Cindy, would you like to come forward and talk to us about the ladies' tea? And then after that, I will have Ashley for the baggage collection. Good morning. Good morning. Today's the last day to sign up. Make sure you have a reservation for the ladies' tea. It's next Sunday from 2 to 4. We have some special entertainment going to happen as well. So don't forget to sign up. And then also in your bulletins, you'll find uh, special offering envelopes for UMCOR. And <coughs> if you like using QR codes, there's also a, a flyer in there for using QR codes. And while Ashley's heading up here, uh, this week for those who are at Dive, um, tax day is Monday. Ooh. It's also Dive Day at Westwood. Um, on Wednesday is the Lydia Ann Circle, and it's also the day all your newsletter articles are due, so please get those in. And Wednesday is also the day of Ad Council, so mark your calendars for those. As you recall, hopefully Ad Council is open to everybody to come. The only thing that you cannot stay in the room for is Staff Parish Relations Committee stuff. Other than that, you're welcome to be in the room. You're welcome to talk and participate and give your two cents. Um, they're never closed except for the SPRC section. Hi, um, starting next week, we're gonna start collecting luggage or like duffel bags or different things you have. So the month of April is Child Abuse and Neglect Awareness Month. Um, in case you didn't know, I'm a foster parent, but 
oftentimes kids come into care with just a trash bag. So if it's their first removal, they're handed a trash bag and given five minutes to pack their belongings. But also when they move from foster home to foster home, they also, I've had only one kid in the 27 kids who have lived with me come with something other than a trash bag. So it's important and it gives them a lot of dignity. So as you're doing your spring cleaning, if you wanna bring in your luggage sets or your duffel bags, or even if you just have really good backpacks, you can bring it in and then we'll donate it to um, DCS and other agencies in our office or in our area that remove kids and so that kids are able to move with dignity. Thank you so much. Um, I think Cindy mentioned UMCOR, we've got that information and I think that is all of the announcements. Are there any others that I am missing? Okay, well with that, I will happily hand it over. Let's stand and praise our incredible God. Yes, and we're gonna join in singing, I will follow and step by step. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. good all your ways are sure i will trust in you alone higher than my sight high above my life i will trust in you alone where you go i'll go where you stay i'll stay when you move i'll move i will follow you who you love i'll love you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you. Yeah, I will follow you. Yeah, light into the world, light into my life. I will live for you alone. You're the one I see, knowing I will find all I need in you. This life I lose, I will follow you, yeah, I will follow you, yeah. In you there's life everlasting, in you there's freedom for my soul, in you there's joy and ending joy, and I will follow where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. In this life, I lose. I will follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you. Who you love, I'll love. How you serve, I'll serve. If this life I lose, I will follow you, yeah. 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 Now, step by step. Oh, God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. And I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me. And I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your 
your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Thank you. Please be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer. Holy, healing God, who shines extravagant grace into our lives, thank you for sending Jesus to show us how to shine extravagant grace into the lives of our neighbors. Through ministries like the United Methodist Committee on Relief, as we worship and praise you today, move us to live in ways that shine brightly with your extravagant grace, illuminating all that is good and right and true. Amen. Where have you seen God moving this week? What are your praises and concerns as Lee runs for the microphone? We got Cindy over here. <coughs> we all have been praying for Casey Hauser, my great niece, and she had her first radiation treatment this past Tuesday and got along well. She has to be isolated, and so she's been away from her family for quite, s quite a few days. Uh, but she's doing quite well. Also, um, Cheryl Wright's parents, uh, Richard and Doris Johnson. Richard fell last week and was in the hospital, and Cheryl said he didn't break anything, but um, we'll be coming home soon, and we'll be needing a ramp, and then also we'll be having some home health care. So we need to keep Richard especially in our prayers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Malcolm. Yes, I just want to say uh, this past week I had to do some work at my mom's house. Mm -hmm. And I just praise my good friend Mike went up and worked with me for two days and gave his expertise and help. So it's good to have friends. Absolutely. <coughs> Got one right here, Cindy. He's coming. He's sanitizing the mic. Well, you know, we've all been praying for Gary Anderson, and with his passing, um, Gail should feel really good because there's been so many people who've stepped up to do things, donate things, care for her. She's gotten lots of prayers along with Gary and the rest of the family, and uh, that, that to me is just amazing to see it all unfold like that. Absolutely. Pastor Michelle? Yes. Well, I have seen God moving from the beginning of the Easter cantata to this last Sunday. Mm -hmm. We took it to the prison on March 19th, and then we did it here on the 24th, and then took it to Tyson Methodist this past uh, Sunday. And it's been such a blessing because we feel like people were blessed by it, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I keep telling the choir, it's a ministry, it's a music ministry, it's not entertainment. And that definitely comes through in how they, you know, perform it, and I believe it helps in how it's perceived. So mm -hmm. it's just been such a blessing, so. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Others? Oh, over here. got a call from Don Joseph this morning. Please be in prayer for Betty. They're very private. They didn't want to mention it, but I know the power of prayer, and I know they would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, Betty's not feeling well this morning. <coughs> Others? Okay. Let's take a moment to take a deep breath in. Just beginning to center ourselves. Releasing all those thoughts that are running through our brains. Taking another deep breath in. Just being fully present in the here and now. Taking any of those leftover concerns, breathing out and placing them at the foot of the cross. 
taking another deep breath in, the very breath of God, knowing that God is with us. All that we have to do is open our awareness, breathing out and trusting in that. This time, if you would like to come forward and light a candle and lift your prayers in that fashion, you are welcome to do so. We ask that you light from top to the bottom. If you would like to come and pray at the rail, you are welcome to do so at this time. And if you would prefer to uh, sit in your seats and pray there, you are welcome to do that too. Lord God, we praise you for friends and family and helping hands, for ministries big and small, for our Easter cantata that was able to touch so many lives, for the ways individuals are stepping up and helping each other and showing your love and being your hands and feet. We lift to you all those who are in need of your healing, whether in body, mind, soul, or spirit. We continue to lift up Sam and all those who are caring for him and working with him. We lift up Casey Hauser and ask that you work through these treatments to help make her well. Continue to work through Ashley. We praise you for all the ways you are moving in our world, we ask that you surround Gail and Gary and uh, Gail Anderson in her grief of Gary's loss. Surround her children with just laughter and love. And we thank you for all the ways that's already been happening. Pour healing into Betty Joseph, strengthen Dawn and his care for her. Be with Cheryl as she cares for her parents in these moments. And you know uh, that a ramp needs to be built, Lord, and so we know that you will make that happen. Continue to pour healing into Richard's body. For all the places on this planet where there is strife, Lord, bring your peace. Help us all to be one with you and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. May your spirit grow in each of us individually and collectively. We pray all this as your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I would like to call forward our treasurer, Donna Lohorn, and I would like to call forward Kenan Gray and Chris Sittler from Kiwanis. Um, as many of you know, Bob Bowman uh, was a very active member here, and in Kiwanis he sold bajillions of tickets for a pancake breakfast. At least, at least a bajillion. He was so excellent at those things. Um, and so we have a presentation for Kiwanis from our congregation's uh, Faith Promise Fund. We do our can, can through um, our, like Michelle said, our Faith Promise. We'd like to present um, your organization a check for $500 in memory of Bob Bowman and, and what he's done for our community and our church. Thank you. Um, some of you, I know many of you in here, uh, some of us meet on Tuesday mornings uh, for called the symposium. If you've not heard of it, I'm surprised, but we've lost some great members to that group, like uh, Bob most recently, um, Dave Gratner Sr., uh, and my mind's going blank. <laughs> um, but Bob would sell more tickets and you've probably been hit up with him numerous times <laughs> at the door here than the rest of the club. We have 30 members than the rest of the club combined. He, uh, he was dedicated to the purpose of helping children in Henry County in particular. And uh, this is great. I know our symposium group met out at Glen Oaks with him on his 96th birthday. And uh, the members we lost, again, we're all veterans. World War II or Korea. And uh, with me is Chris Settler. He is the Lieutenant Governor of East Central Indiana Kiwanis Clubs, the Rose Division. And he probably has things to say, but Bob had a huge heart, and especially a huge heart for Kiwanis and for the shoe program. I'm glad to see Mark and his beautiful wife here. Um, they were so helpful in, in assisting. Uh, Bob in uh, final years as they moved to uh, uh, out at, uh, I'm just so going blank. Forest Ridge, Forest Ridge. yes, yeah. thank you. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Chris. Again, he's our Lieutenant Governor, but we thank you so much. Um, this year we gave out 580 pairs of shoes that we had to buy through the shoe sensation, and this helps a great deal. All those kids were chosen by people in their schools. Every school, public school in Henry County got, got shoes. And I'm gonna turn it over to Chris, but thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Well, as Ken had mentioned, of course, Bob was a very dedicated member of this church we know because he talked very passionately and lovingly about this place, every, just about every Kiwanis Club meeting, so I know how much this place meant to him. And I know how much Kiwanis meant to him. He was a 50 year member of the Kiwanis Club. And uh, we certainly miss his presence uh, beyond just his incredible salesmanship for the pancake breakfast and so forth. But um, yes, the, uh, as Kenan mentioned, we, we do uh, have our shoe program as our signature project. Each Kiwanis Club is encouraged to have what is called a signature project. We chose the shoe program, and it has grown immensely through the years. In fact, uh, not only do we go to every uh, elementary school in the county, every public elementary school, but also we have expanded into Head Start as well. So that, uh, that accounts for quite a few of our pairs of shoes. And we could not have done it without Bob helping grow the program through his dedication. And so it is certainly an honor to be here today to remember Bob and all that he has done, not only for Kiwanis and for the Methodist Church, but also for the community and through his work, through the mission work that he did with uh, kids in Africa, the world. Bob impacted his community and the world. And thank you very much for letting us share in that, uh, that celebration of remembering him. Thanks again. Absolutely. Before you leave, Chris, what day is the pancake breakfast? Oh, May 4th. May 4th. May the 4th be with you. 
May the fourth be with you. And it's downstairs here, so that it's not like you can't say you don't know where to go. It, just go downstairs, and the pancakes will be down there. Thank you so much. At this time, if the ushers, oh, wait, hold on. I'm pretty sure. There it is. We're going to invite the ushers to come forward. I want to remind you, um, as you can see, your donations for the Faith Promise Fund are doing great work in our community. Um, as Cindy mentioned earlier, where today we are collecting fund, funds for UMCOR's operational costs. So each year, there's a special Sunday called UMCOR Sunday, where United Methodists around the globe collect an offering and the funds go to the administrative costs of UMCOR. So this means that when you donate to a particular project, Every single dollar, every single dime, every single penny is being capitalized on and going straight to that project and being stretched even further. So uh, I invite the ushers to come forward and serve us at this time. For those joining us online, you can go to our website at ncmethodist.org and click on the PayPal logo. Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Gracious God, receive these gifts with uh, thanksgiving. Bless them and multiply them to relieve the suffering of your people, to train and equip UMCOR staff and volunteers, to create wholeness instead of brokenness. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture reading today is from John 17, verses 18, 18 through 21. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. My Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts, our minds, and our ears to the message that you have for us this day. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be worthy in your sight. Move in us, move among us, move through us. Help us to know your presence and be one with you every day. Amen. Jesus' life was a spiritual life, a life of uninterrupted attentiveness to the Spirit of God in love. And the goal of Jesus' ministry is to bring us into this triune community of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all of us. In Luke, Jesus' first statement in the temple is, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free. 
It is for all of us, all of humanity. Henry Nowlin taught that our lives are destined to become like the life of Jesus, to bring us to the house of the Father, to free us from sin and death, and to lead us into the intimacy of his divine life, being one with God, being one with each other, and being one in ministry to all the world. Jesus is not unreachable. The Spirit is not unreachable. Jesus came to this earth to give his life, to lift us up into loving community with the Father. And we remember that every week as we feast at the banquet we call communion. Everything that belongs to Jesus is given for us to receive. All that he does, we may also do. We are not second-class citizens in the kingdom of God. Nothing is withheld. John 15, 15 says, I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. John 14, 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And Jesus prays that all of the disciples and all of those who were yet to come may be one. He says, Father, just as I am in you, may they be in you. May they be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have been given them the glory that you gave me. We are not second-class citizens. He gives us the spirit that we may be one with each other and in God. I in them, you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. When we are in unity, then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. He became like us so that we could become like him. He emptied himself on a cross, and he became like we are so that we could become like him and share in his divine life, the work of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus sends the Spirit on Pentecost, which we're heading into, so that we can live in that full truth of the divine life true relationship with God, the same relationship that Jesus had with the Father. Pentecost is the fullness of Jesus' ministry becoming visible. The lives of the disciples are transformed into Christ-like lives. And they are lifted up to the divine life of God. But being lifted up and participating in the divine life of God is not to be taken out of this world. It is to be sent into this world. You can look at that throughout the history of the Bible. There's the story of Elijah when the queen wants to kill him because she kills all the prophets, let's be honest. And so he flees and he goes up into the mountains and he is pretty depressed if we're honest. And the angels are ministering to him, and he wants to hear God's voice. And he steps out of the cave, and it's just a, a small wind. It's a still, small voice. But that still, small voice doesn't tell him, hey, buddy, you get to just hide out in this cave and worship me. You get to just hang out here and focus on me all the time. He says to him, go back into the world. Go back. We are called to be connected to God's spirit and to go out into the world. And we can do big things when we come together connected to God's spirit and when we go out into the world together. 
UMCOR is a perfect example because it's a relief organization that goes into devastating situations and provides hope. Provides a washcloth to wash your face, a toothbrush to brush your teeth, water to drink. Did you know that we actually have a local distribution center only a few hours from here? I was in a UW, uh, United Women of Faith, small group on the Mondays. What are we called? Ruth, the Ruth Circle. And we were talking, and I let them know about Midwest Mission, and, and they had never heard of this. If you want to check it out, you can literally type in midwestmission.org, and it will pull up the website. The first church that I served is where I learned about this organization because I, growing up in the United Methodist Church in Indiana, did not know it exists. So if you didn't know, it's okay. I didn't either. But the first church that I served down in Bedford sent a team every single year. They would pack supplies. They would fix things. They would organize whatever Midwest Mission needed them to do for that week. This organization is located in Pawnee, Illinois, and they do amazing work. They are an UMCOR distribution site. They have sent 299 domestic disbursements and over $6.54 million in humanitarian aid. Midwest Mission is one of seven cooperating depots in the UMCOR relief network. It's our local area one. The particular Midwest Mission is not funded or run by UMCOR but it does receive, assemble, and store all the UMCOR kits and disperses them upon request during disasters here in the United States, particularly, obviously, here in the Midwest because that's where they're stationed. They send tangible resources to those in need, which makes an intangible difference in the lives of others through hope and empowerment. They deal with disaster relief. They deal with health and education, and micro-business loans, which is a lot like what John Wesley first did when he set up in London. The main point of the London church was not particularly to come to worship. It was literally to be a health clinic, a school, to create micro-business loans. They held school there actually on Sunday. This is the origin of Sunday school. Sunday school as we know it is not what it was when it originally started. Sunday school started because people worked all week long and of course back then children worked. And so they didn't get a chance to go to school. Sunday was their day off. So they would come to this location and they would learn school. They would learn to read. They would learn to write, do arithmetic. And they did all this on Sunday. Now, as they were learning to read, they were also obviously learning to read scripture. So Christianity was in there. But Sunday school was literally about giving people and empowering people with the skills they needed to better their lives. Wesley understood that you had to care for the whole person. If they're struggling just to put food on their table, how are they going to really take time to focus on what God wants for their lives when they're starving? So Wesley dealt with the whole person. In order for us to be one, we have to care about the whole person in front of us. We have to offer hospitable space where the spirit can move. Have you ever had a conversation with people or sat at a round table where not everybody had the same opinion or the same thoughts? They all had differing viewpoints. But everybody sat around and respected each other's viewpoints? I know it doesn't happen much anymore, it seems like, in our culture, right? But if you ever get a chance to participate, which is really everyday life, because we're always having conversations, and you use those Christian conferencing guidelines, and you don't belittle somebody for their viewpoint, but you're open and curious about it, there is 
a wonderful sacred space that opens up where we start to become one because we really care and are learning to understand. It doesn't mean that I'm going to change your viewpoint or you're going to change my viewpoint. It means that maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. Or maybe it's my truth and I'm going to still hear yours and try to understand your viewpoint better and at least show you some respect. That's a holy moment. That's when the Spirit is making us one. Making us one. And Jesus became like us so that we might become like him. Loving others, bringing others into community, showing them respect. He emptied himself and became like we are so that we could become like him and share in his divine life. That is the work of the Holy Spirit that he has given to us. And he sends the Spirit so that we can live in the full truth of the divine life. In true relationship with God, keeping our eyes focused on God and have the same relationship that Jesus had with the Father, we can have with the Trinity. Again, Pentecost is the fullness of Jesus' ministry becoming visible in us. Our lives become transformed into Christ-like lives. And we are lifted up and participate in the divine life of God. Not taken out of the world, not shielded from the horrors of the world. Doesn't mean everything's going to run smoothly, right? There's going to be bumps. But going into the world filled with grace, filled with love. As we said in our prayer, extravagant grace. We can give each other grace sometimes, but extravagant grace. What does extravagant mean to you? Because when I think of extravagant, I think of like way over the top. Like fill every nook and cranny. It's ridiculous and overwhelming. What is ridiculous and overwhelming grace? And how do we show it amongst each other? How do we open up those holy spaces where the Spirit is not only moving in us, but is moving in us as a community? And we do it with extravagant grace. Always being open and loving and respectful, not having bitterness and complaining hearts and pointing fingers, but just caring for each other. We may not be biologically related, but we are brothers and sisters in Christ. So the example of going and caring for Gail, I know some ladies went and made sure her house was ready for guests. That's love and that's grace. And did you go in and did you, did you judge any dust bunnies that existed if there were any? No. Who has dust bunnies in their house? Everyone raise your hands. Cindy, come on, did you raise yours? She does, she does too. We all do, right? It's not judging the dust bunnies in each other's homes. And it's not judging the dust bunnies in our lives either, right? It's loving each other and helping each other clear the dust bunnies out. That's being one in God and being one with each other. It's loving each other and loving those outside these walls in the same way. Being curious about them, knowing that maybe they haven't realized it yet, but God is pulling at them. Supporting UMCOR, volunteering at the Midwest Mission, they're they're just some of the ways that you can join in the work that God is doing in the world and that needs done in the world. It's one way that you can participate in how God is moving. Another way that you can participate is like we did today, the Faith Promise account. It's going to put shoes on children's feet. That's awesome. You can go home and go through your bags, your book bags, your duffel bags. You know those bags you go to those like different conventions or some party and they always give you some kind of little backpacky stringy thing. You get like a million of them. 
we probably have all those, bring those in. And then kids can move with dignity. I mean, they're in a hard spot anyway. Let's let them keep their dignity. Anyone want to move in trash bags? It's like, that's, I've moved a few times in my life, y'all, just a few. Trash bags are like that last minute stuff, right? Everything else is, is all taken care of. It's like the last minutes. We want these children to feel seen and loved and cared for. So let's show them that. Today I want to remind you that as you look at all the ways you can give and all the ways that you can participate, it all starts with prayer and connecting and God's spirit being in you. Midwest Mission didn't come to be without prayer. The United Methodist Church did not come to be without prayer. John Wesley was a prayer warrior. Prayer is the start of it all because we have to be connected to God in order to really love each other and be one with each other. So I want to remind you today that every dollar that gets donated to UMCOR goes to their operating costs. And I think that's really important, especially when a disaster happens. It's a great time for you to introduce your friends to the United Methodist Church. Because the people would be like, where, where can I give money? What can I do? And a lot of people get mad at the Red Cross because the Red Cross has administrative costs. And so much of every donation goes to administrative costs. And people say, well, I don't want my money going there. You could tell them, the United Methodist Church, none of it will go there. And we'll actually almost stretch your dollar to double depending on what depot you're working out of. You can stretch your dollar because of the volunteers that have gone to things like the Midwest Distribution Center and gotten everything prepped because of the donations and cleaning kits and hygiene kits that have already been sent there. And that's a huge opportunity to reach out and say, hey, come, we can, we can create hygiene kits together and have a, a tangible hands-on experience of being the hands and feet of God. It's an easy way to invite people into the work that God is doing in our world. So I encourage you to pray and really consider how God is speaking to you and wanting you to talk with others. Today, the United Women of Faith, which is a mission group, specifically of the women in our church, um, is donating a lovely check specifically to UMCOR. Cindy, can you come forward? United, <coughs> excuse me, United Women of Faith uh, donates a lot of money to different organizations, and we are very happy and proud that we're able to donate a check for $350 to UMCOR. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is the women of our church coming together and doing work and raising funds to help others in the world. It's amazing what we can do. We can sh put shoes on children, we can feed, we can love, and we can bring others into the love of God. Let us pray. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here because we want to be one with you. We want to be one in Christ. We want to be one with each other, knowing that the Spirit is moving and making space for that. We want to be in ministry to all the world. Let us be your hands and feet Help us to support organizations like UMCOR and Kiwanis that are doing amazing things. Help us to invite others to become one in you, to expand the table. Give us extravagant love and extravagant grace overflowing so that we can share that with the world. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we can be that for the world through his spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen.
On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he sat around with his disciples. Not all of them. He had, like, tons, right? But he sat around with the core group, with their wives and children. And this core group would spread out through the world and share the good news of Jesus. And because of what they did, we were able to be saved and be here in this place, in this time, sharing God's love, not only with each other, but out into the world. And as he sat around the table, he broke bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave thanks to God and he said, take, drink, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In remembrance of these mighty acts in Christ, we offer ourselves as living sacrifices in union with Christ, being one with Christ. We die to self, we take up our cross, and we do God's work and will in our world. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for coming into the world. Thank you that we are not second-class citizens, that we can do what you did here on earth. We can proclaim the good news. We can proclaim freedom and recovery. We can set people free. Continue to work in us and mold us to be like you. Continue to help us be attentive to your spirit, working towards constant prayer, constant connection. Open our eyes to the ways that you are working in us and among us and through us and in our community and in our world. We want to be more like you. Help us to be open to that and to take up our cross and follow you. Give us faith overflowing. Give us courage overflowing. Grace extravagantly. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Would you please stand? And we're going to join in singing our closing song, Freely, Freely. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. I've been born again in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, freely, freely, you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I Lord, make his face to shine upon you, and may you feel his love extravagantly, his grace extravagantly, and may you go out into the world and share that with others, and see it in them, and make space for the Spirit. Amen. Amen.